Hey, what's going on everybody? Today on the channel, we're gonna be revisiting Windows 8.1 here in 2025. So this is gonna be our first kind of video where we take a look at some older software, older tag, different things like that to kick off the new year. And I noticed that I haven't actually done a video on Windows 8.1 since 2021. So some things have changed uh, with support and you know how things work here on Windows 8.1. So let's go ahead and discuss it real quick. So Windows 8.1 came out all the way back in 2013. How crazy to think about some of these years when this stuff came out, but it was followed pretty, uh, well, it followed after Windows 8 relatively quickly, and that's because, well, Windows 8 was kind of a mixed bag. It wasn't really uh, optimized for most people because I think Microsoft wanted to force tablet use on everybody and they weren't really thinking about you know people that use keyboards and mouses and just use a computer they don't need a tablet functionality so they quickly tried to revamp uh, for Windows 8.1 and they did an okay job with it there was still a lot of stuff um, kind of for like a tablet and different things like that, but at least they gave us back, you know, kind of the main functionalities that we were all used to. The biggest change with Windows 8 or 8.1 is the all new start menu. If you go into the start menu, you notice that it looked quite different than Windows 7. You know, we've had the same old start menu for years and years and years. It just kind of pops up down there in the bottom left hand corner. You can quickly access whatever you want. Well now we have kind of more like a home screen with a bunch of applications, uh, definitely tablet-like. And Microsoft made a lot of new apps, as you can see. These are all different applications. They're all full screen apps. So you have like mail, weather, stocks, photos, different things like that. You also had some full screen like Microsoft Office applications like OneNote and just different stuff like that. However, some of this was kind of confusing because you had a lot of duplicated applications. You know, it just kind of didn't really make sense. But I guess at the same time, you know, Microsoft, they kind of made all these new apps and they're like, well, we better include them. I mean, we already made them. But, you know, you'll look at things like uh, the calculator, uh, for example. You know, there's two calculator uh, applications, the typical one that we always have, and then there's a new full screen one. Same thing goes with like Internet Explorer. You could you know, click on the Internet Explorer application, which is the new one here. It's nice and full screen. It looks completely different. Or you can just use the Internet Explorer that is installed here on the desktop. So um, actually what has happened recently is you have switched to the new Microsoft Edge, which was for security reasons and stuff like that. But you can see that here we are accessing just a normal desktop version of Internet Explorer slash Microsoft Edge. So there was a lot of duplicated things there. There was also some new kind of hot corners that you could access. So if you were in a full screen application, you could go down to the bottom left, you could access the start menu, which would take you back to the home screen. If you go up here in the top left corner, uh, you could do kind of like some app switching, different things like that. And then over here in the right and the bottom right corners, you could access kind of like a little quick uh, controls menu here. So there's your search functionality, share devices, and your device settings. So you could uh, do different stuff like that. So yeah, overall design purpose for Windows 8 was gonna definitely be more of a tablet-oriented experience, but Microsoft kind of jumped the gun on that one, it seemed like. So they had to kind of tone things back down to normal for Windows 8, and then obviously, or I should say Windows 8.1, and then with 10 and 11 now today, obviously they have kind of went back to their roots, which is a good thing. I guess it's just something like, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But overall, like design wise, I mean, it's still super familiar. One of the things I like to look at is the file explorer. This file explorer looks so much like Windows 11, Windows 10 uh, that we have today. Uh, same with the icons and different things like that. So it is nice to see kind of like that file explorer that we all know and love. Um, another thing about using this here. Uh, today in 2025 that's kind of changed is uh, support. There's no more support for Windows 8.1. 
Uh, Microsoft actually ended support uh, in late 20, well, I think it was the beginning of 23. Oh yeah, it was January 2023, January 10th, as you can see right here. So they ended the support here, no longer doing extended security updates for Windows 8.1. And that's a pretty big deal. Uh, you typically do not want to use any sort of operating system if it's no longer receiving security updates. Feature updates aren't necessarily that important, but the security updates, especially for Windows operating system, is pretty serious because you know there could be viruses, malware, different things, um, new exploits that are never going to get fixed, and you can be, you know, running a pretty big risk uh, still using this software today. So that's one reason why I don't really recommend that somebody keep using like an old version of Windows. Mac OS is kind of different. Uh, you know, Apple supported things like High Sierra for many years. They're still supporting like two, three year old operating systems, no problem. And they'll do that for many years to come. I mean, I'm still using my 2018 MacBook Air with, you know, I can't get the latest version. So I'm still using the old software and it's still getting security updates. So um, that is nice here. But Windows, yeah, it's definitely different. Also, something you'll notice is you're not going to be able to download like latest versions of applications, different things like that. Um, uh, they basically shut down the Microsoft Store because every time I try to open it, all it does is spin and spin and spin. If we take a look at some kind of main applications here, so for example, if you look at Google Chrome, it says download Chrome for Windows 8.1 and 7 and 8, but it says this device will re won't receive updates because Chrome no longer supports your operating system. So, you know, you download Chrome, you're not going to get any security updates or updates for Chrome. Same goes with something like Firefox. You go to Firefox, it says extended support release, no longer supports Windows 8.1. Now, Steam, for example, actually, it doesn't say anything about downloading, like not supporting or anything. It just says download for Windows. But I'm pretty sure something like Steam uh, is the same way. I'm not sure if you'll even be able to download, like, latest games or things like that. So what's the long story short here? Windows 8.1 in 2025. Well, main problem here is you're no longer going to receive any support, any security updates for this operating system, which makes it like a huge risk to continue to use. However, if you do have to continue to use this, just be very mindful of what you're doing online. Um, you know, use an ad blocker, use um, bunch of browser extensions to kind of prevent things that could pop up or different stuff like that you know go to websites that you trust don't click on any suspicious email links or anything like that if you're going to keep using it but i feel like most people by now have probably at least bumped up to windows 10 or maybe even windows 11 although windows 10 support is coming to an end i believe in 2025 which is Pretty crazy to think about as well. As far as using applications and things, you'll still be able to use relatively new versions of your apps. I mean, they'll obviously look pretty similar to like what you have today on Chrome or Firefox, for example. But with something like Google Chrome, which is one of the most popular web browsers in the world, not receiving updates or security updates, that could be something to really think about. So really what I recommend, I mean, Windows 8.1 is just kind of something fun to play with in 2025. I probably wouldn't be using it on a daily basis. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much everything for this video. Just a real quick kind of run through here looking at this. Uh, let me know what you think about Windows 8.1. Did you actually enjoy it or Windows 8? Or were you glad that Windows 10 went back to normal, basically? But anyways, guys, thanks for watching the channel as always, and I'll catch you all in the next video.